Did you know the online music education market size is projected to reach 421 Point nine million dollars by 2027. This statistic is from Astute Analytics. 421.9 million dollars by 2027. Is this why I continue to teach violin online? Not at all. I found that statistic just to get your attention at the beginning of this video. Hi, I'm Heather Kay, violinist and high vibe creative soulpreneur. In this video, I will be sharing with you why I continue to teach violin online. This last week, a question was posed to me by a colleague and follower that she is receiving some disapproval and dissatisfaction from her peers because she wants to continue teaching violin online. Why are you continuing to teach violin online when COVID is over, the pandemic is over? So her beautiful question inspired me to create this video on why I continue to teach violin online. You see, I started teaching violin online in 2011, 11 years ago, <laughs> 12 now. This was before COVID pandemic, everybody was working online. I started teaching online way before that. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I started teaching violin online why I initially started making videos, how my huge lifestyle change of living and working in Bulgaria was the launching pad for my eBooks and violin academies to be created, how teaching online evolved my violin studio, and finally, why do I continue to teach violin online? You may wanna grab a cup of tea, your favorite beverage, as you're watching this video, since it might be a longer one. I started teaching violin online and piano actually in 2011. Why? <laughs> because I was performing overseas and my students in the States wanted to continue to have lessons. They were so dedicated that they asked me to teach them online while I was in Europe. When the question was first posed to me, I was like, no, there's no way I'm not teaching online. I'm a classical traditional violinist and I don't teach online. You can wait until I get back. Can you believe it? <laughs> My students wanted lessons and I denied them because I didn't think it was possible to teach violin online effectively. So second year came around. Again, I was in Europe to perform specifically in Bulgaria. And they asked me, Heather, please, we want lessons. We want violin lessons and we want piano lessons. It's like, okay, you know what? I will agree to do piano lessons only, not violin, because I could see how piano could be effective, how I can still continue teaching piano online. So I did, and I was like blown away. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> It actually worked. So then I thought, okay, well, you know what? I should probably give violin a try if piano is okay. And so I did, and honestly, I was really surprised. So thanks to my seven or eight-year-old student that was extremely persistent. You see, before I started teaching online, I taught over 12 years of violin studio in Racine, Wisconsin. I grew up in Racine. I went to Colorado and got my violin performance degree and then returned back to Wisconsin and performed in 25 different orchestras. My schedule was waking up in the morning, practicing my violin with a cuppa <laughs> until I started teaching, which was around two or three in the afternoon when the students got out of school. And I taught till, seven o'clock on the nights that I had rehearsals as I played with 25 different orchestras and not all at once. It was more like five, but within that year span, the total orchestras that I played with was at least 25 different orchestras in Wisconsin, Illinois, and Iowa. I also had my own contracting business where we played for weddings and background music 
So my schedule was wicked busy. Concerts on the weekends, weddings I was playing, teaching, performing, practicing. <laughs> it was nonstop the second I woke up until the second I went to bed. And this was my life for how many years? 12 years before I started, before I started performing in Bulgaria. And I had a huge lifestyle change, but I'll talk about that later in the video. So the next question, why I started initially making videos? It was presented to me that it may be a good idea to create a Kickstarter project on violin teaching videos. And I believe it again was 2011, 2012. I did create that Kickstarter project where I was successfully funded to create a series of videos. Some of them you can still see on the YouTube channel, the very beginning, the videos that I created, and they were for uh, beginner violinists. As you may know, Kickstarter is an interesting platform because the money that I received, I actually donated that as far as my time to teach English through the arts, I called it. So I would go into the kindergartens and the child centers in Gabrovo, and I would have classes on teaching the children English via music, rhythm, art, motion, and we had a concert at the end. So it was a really fun win-win project where I created these videos and also worked with teaching children English in Bulgaria. Shortly after this, I returned back to the States. My students, funnily enough, after they had experienced online lessons, decided that, hey, this isn't so bad. The parents loved it. They didn't have to take their kids after school to my house for lessons. So I had a few students that chose to continue with online lessons while I was in the States. I had one dear little student who was super struggling with the G major scale. And honestly, I lost my patience. And I told her, I said, you know what? I've got a video for you to watch. And I put that video on and she watched it online. She woke up, her eyes were just like, whoa. She couldn't believe she was seeing me on the monitor. And she woke up. After she watched that video, no matter the fact that I said the exact same thing to her before the video and she wasn't getting it, she watched that video and she played that G major scale with the C natural on the A string without a glitch, without a hitch, without a hiccup. She just mastered it. That was when I started to realize, oh my heavens, this really is effective. This video training is really effective. And that inspired me more to continue on the route of making videos. So my YouTube channel that was created in 2010, more for my performance videos, just naturally evolved to me creating violin video tutorials for my students and for my fans, for my followers. Previously, I mentioned how my huge lifestyle change was the launching pad for my eBooks and academies. And that is definitely the case. As soon as I chose to play permanently with the Gabriel Chamber Orchestra, my life kind of opened up. It just really took a serious turn. I remember sitting in my office in my apartment that I was renting out, which was a huge type of office. All I had was my violin and my computer. I didn't have my library of books, of music that I left in the States. I had nothing. I just had my computer and my violin. And I was thinking, whoa, what am I going to do? <laughs> I felt a little lost at that time. Now, there was another time that I sat at Panera Bread with my computer while I was playing with the Illinois Symphony in Springfield, Illinois. And I sat there with my computer and I thought, I looked at my computer and I thought, I know I need to be doing something with this, but what? <laughs> I just had always had this kind of like draw that I, there was something there. 
Now, let me back up a little bit. At the beginning, I said I was classically trained violinist. How can online teaching be effective? I was also a complete technophobe. You wouldn't believe it, but I felt drained from the computer. I would sit at the computer and just for like 15 minutes, and it was like I felt all the energy being drained out of me. I hated the computer. I was super late in creating an email account. I didn't start a Facebook account until 2010, 2011, around this time. Up until then, I did nothing with the computers. I remember when I was a child and my dad was so excited about you know having the Commodore 64, I know I'm dating myself, and how I needed to learn how to do these different things on the computer. And I would sit on the chair next to him and I just felt like my energy was being sucked out of me by this computer. So you can get a little background on, on how, where I came from as far as working on the computer. And the time that I had not established a violin studio, a significant amount of students to support myself, I did work for a friend of the family on website design. And I learned a little bit about website design and I started working on the computer. So I did have a bit of a background with computers before I came to Bulgaria, but really this lifestyle change opened up a whole world. So what was this lifestyle change? I played in only one orchestra. I went from 25 different orchestras in a span of 11, 12 years to only one orchestra. In the States, I was playing with at least five different orchestras maintaining a violin studio uh, between 15 to 35 students. And the performing and the driving, I would drive almost two hours to rehearsal. The longest I drove was from Racine to Des Moines when I played with the Des Moines Metropolitan Opera. So you can see, Bulgaria, one orchestra. My apartment was across from our re rehearsal hall. I would just wake up and walk to rehearsals. Rehearsals were in the morning. And we had a really beautiful schedule where we rehearsed right before the concert. So we had like maybe four or five days of rehearsals before each concert. And sometimes only three morning and afternoon. It was really nice, really nice schedule. Opened up a lot of time for me. I continued with my students online, but they were starting to evolve to be more adults. So it was a combination at this time between children, teenager, and adults. I had the time to actually write out all those exercises that were in my mind for the 12 years of teaching in Wisconsin before coming to Bulgaria. And I never had the time to write things out. And now I had the time. And these exercises that were in my head are now my ebooks that I've written. And they're all based on the holes that I saw in the repertoire and in the exercise books and the etude books, or the lack of extra training that could really be beneficial for violinists to learn to supplement these other etude books and exercise books. And they were the exact exercises that I gave my students who played extremely well and won concerto competitions and state honors, honors orchestra. Uh, every year they had solo and ensemble and all my kids did amazing. They were always top, 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 top. And these exercises that I would give them, I would just kind of like write them out quickly. They're in my head, but I never wrote them out in the book. So this was the inspiration and I had the time to write this out and create these ebooks. Then one vacation, I went to the Black Sea, a beautiful little village called Rezavo, and I woke up with the sun and I just was like on fire and I started writing things out in a notebook from the very beginning. I just had this like super inspiration to write down everything that I had taught in the series of the way I taught it from uh, my teaching in Wisconsin. And I wrote it down to create my very first academy because I thought, you know what, I'm going to put all this in. My original thought was I'm just going to make this one huge academy that people can learn from beginning. Uh, basically, the, my system that I used 
took a violinist for through six to eight years of training and I put it all into this academy. Basically everything that I would teach to a six year old all the way up to 18 years of age from Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to Concerto Repertoire, Mozart Concerto, Brook Violin Concerto. And I started creating this and then I started making the videos and then I started creating this academy. Now, as you can imagine, I needed to learn how to promote these products. I needed to learn how to promote the eBooks, the academies, how to create them. And so I started researching and I started learning. I spent thousands of dollars, thousands, let's say easily in the upper five figures on how to build what I've built online. I've attended online many different business workshops, classes, academies, schools, and all of that combined is how I've been able to create what I've created online. I've always been the violinist that needed to have something else, not just violin. And this is just how my brain works. I actually do well in a lot of different subjects as opposed to channeling my energy in only one. I started violin when I was very young. I started piano when I was super young. So I was studying both violin and piano at a very high level up until the university and at the beginning of the university. And then when I had to take electives, I decided to take uh, international relations and uh, continue my literature studies. With my electives, I started building my second degree in English literature. And at the same time, I was still continuing to learn and study French. And I thought maybe I would do a third degree in French with a minor in international relations. I mean, I've, I've just always been that way. My violin did not suffer because I was doing these other uh, topics or studying other things. Au contraire, <laughs> in the contrary, I actually became a better violinist and more well-rounded because my brain was stimulated in different ways. And this also is with business. My grandfather was the president of the business department at Utah State University. My father was, uh, scientists and well-renowned research scientists in the States and worldwide. And so I just seem to have this kind of like in my blood on how to be stimulated by different, different aspects and not just the violin. So I've always been a combination of a violinist and I had to be my own biz owner. I've been self-employed my entire life really. And so whether it was making money online or whether it was making money with a violin studio or supporting myself with a performing, it's always been like pretty much equal to um, time spent as to practicing or performing the violin. It goes, it's always just kind of been there running parallel. So as I was cont continuing on in this trajectory in my violin journey, I received a lot of negative feedback from my peers, a lot. Uh, just like I was at the very beginning, they were like, how can you teach violin online? And believe me, I still get asked this question to this day. How is it possible you could teach violin in mine? How is that even effective? How can your students even learn? How can you even hear? I mean, um, also, you know, if, well, if you're really a violinist, you wouldn't be teaching online. Um, you would be performing in an orchestra. I was an orchestral violinist in the States. I thought that would be where I would just continue on in my career and, and that's what I would be doing. But that's changed. That changed as soon as I came to Bulgaria and experienced this lifestyle of where I can explore my other creative outlets and be a performing violinist and teach online. How did I handle that negative feedback? I told them it's effective. I told them what I experienced. Um, but on all honesty, it doesn't matter what you tell somebody who doesn't believe it's effective. You're not going to change their mind, really. And also, it was interesting when COVID happened, how many peers and colleagues thought, oh, my heavens, uh, Heather was a forerunner a thinker, a forward thinker to do this before COVID. And I had many violinists, many ask me, 
what platforms are you using? How do you do this? How do you do that? My priorities in life and as a violinist changed dramatically um, from the time I was in the States. Now my goal is to reach as many women violinists as possible to help them in their violin journey and to give them the tools that's going to actually take them a lot faster to where they want to be so that they can become the violinists that they desire to be. So to answer the question, why do I continue to teach violin online? I love teaching online. I wouldn't have it any other way. I am super grateful and thankful for this opportunity to teach online. I have students all over the world, South Africa, Canada, United States, Mexico, Europe, Switzerland, France. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing the fact that my little violin studio in Wisconsin that was super effective and successful has turned into this incredible global studio. I love seeing the connections that women have in my group workshops and how they help each other as well. I love seeing how I can take an academy and work with violinists that are absolute beginners to violinists that are professional and everybody gets something out of it. The violinists that are at the beginning see these professional violinists and how they are thinking about things and working things out that it's such a huge inspiration for everybody involved. The professional violinists, the advanced violinists that have their own students, I work with a lot of violin teachers, I'd say mainly uh, the majority of my students are violin teachers themselves, and this gets trickled down. Everything I teach gets trickled down to their students. This is amazing. I have a bigger impact on the earth <laughs> as a violin teacher online as opposed to what I was doing in Racine. So it, it's a lot, it's a lot bigger. It's big. So let this be an inspiration. The next time somebody says to you, ah, why are you still teaching violin online? The pandemic is over. Think about the global reach and think about how many people that you can help online. You reach a lot more people online. So I'm gonna sum up this video with why I love teaching online. I love working with adult violinists. It really has become my passion. I love the challenge of explaining how to play the violin online when I can't touch you, I can't reach out and grab you. That doesn't stop me from being an effective violin teacher. Au contraire, <laughs> I'm actually a more effective violin teacher because I'm able to verbalize exactly how it is to be felt in the right hand or in the left hand. And yes, I use different ways of expressing this, but that's because I've been teaching online for 12 years and I've realized how I need to teach in order to get into the head of my violin students. I love teaching online because I'm a highly sensitive person and empath. Teaching online allows me to uh, work on my computer and keep my energy clean. I have a lot more control over my energy and I just, it, it just works well for me. I actually do get drained from teaching. Not that I don't like it, I love it, but I have to have other ways for violinists to work with me, not just in person. And this allows me to be able to work with more than just my in-person students. I have hundreds of people that have enrolled in my academies over the years, and they can also work with me in the academies in with my YouTube channel and it's not draining my energy because I'm working with them in person. Like I said, I love the challenge working online. I've had many violinists say to me, how is it possible that you can catch this? My in-person teacher never caught this, but you can see this and, and uh, work with me on this online. I actually had a lesson where a violinist, uh, her camera wasn't working. I said, well, we have two options. We can reschedule the lesson or uh, continue without the camera. She said, okay, we'll, we'll continue without the camera. I was like, okay. And I could hear everything I needed to hear to tell her. I knew when the bow directions weren't correct. Obviously I could hear if she was playing something out of tune. I could hear if she was using a different fingering or if she wasn't shifting in the right place. There's a lot of things that I hear and I don't have to see it, but I can hear it. Finally, teaching online allows me to work wherever I go whether I'm in Bulgaria, whether I'm in the United States, whether I'm in Portugal, 
France, it doesn't matter. I have a mobile violin studio. I keep everything very mobile. My iPhone, my MacBook, I have my microphone. Everything is just super portable and I can just pack it up in my suitcase at any moment and fly to any destination pretty much as long as I'm allowed in with my passport <laughs> and teach anywhere. Hopefully you found this rather long video helpful and inspiring uh, and you can see why I continue to teach violin online and why I most likely will probably never stop teaching violin online or having some sort of aspect of online work. I am a high vibe solopreneur and a creative entrepreneur and I pretty much have found my niche. <laughs> I'd love to help you find yours as well. You can ask to be a part of my High Vibe Solopreneur Facebook group if this is something that you'd be interested in staying in touch on this topic and uh, learn more on how to become a High Vibe Solopreneur yourself. Ciao!